Uh, morning guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about quite a little a little firecracker of a species, um, the eastern little tuna, otherwise known as bonito, the Australians call them mac tuna, um, also they're often very confused with, with some of the other skipjacks and things like that, but yeah, eastern little tuna. Scientific name, Euthynus affinis, now Euthynus comes from the, the word means like a tuna, so he's very similar to a tuna, but not a tuna, he's kind of on the sideline. Um, overall, get the tuna shape in your mind, so that, that gas bottle, that, that little uh, torpedo type shape. He has a lot of stripes on his back, that's where he gets, the Aussies give him the name Mac Tuna, because he's got the mackerel type of lines on his back, and he's got three dots on his stomach, on the side like that. Now that sometimes uh, fades with age, but the younger guys will see three dots, one dot, two dot, normally three. Um, obviously genetics sometimes fiddles around messes with our, our descriptions but your yeah, overall shiny fish gas bottle shape dark blue on the top whitey silver on the, the stomach stripes on the back quite a quite an easy one to id um, now much like a tuna he's got big eyes he's a visual hunter he's got a the strong lunate tail uh, for propelling him very very fast and he's very streamlined so he's a he's a speedster now They've been shown to be highly migratory, so which means they don't stay in a single spot, they're not resident. So they're going to move up and down the coast, they move 20 k's that way, 30 k's that way, they're not. They're going to go where the food is. Um, and that obviously fits into the marine protected area thing, we do bring this up a lot, we're trying to get you guys thinking about these things. Now, with a species that moves a lot, a marine protected area is almost almost useless <laughs> because he's going to be moving in and out all the time he's uh, available to the anglers uh, to catch he's of, often exposed to angling pressure almost all the time and he's not sticking in that one area species that stick in an area it's easy to say okay we protect this spot we know frick is going to be safe there because he lives there um yeah so him moving around mpa is not not that important they are as we mentioned, they are a pelagic species, so they're going to—they're not be associated with reefs specifically. They're going to be moving up and down in the water column, moving around. They do like staying near the surface, but they're very popular prey fish. Um, so that being, they're very popular or high on the list of fish, of uh, high on the list of species that want to eat them. If that makes sense. They, the the top on the ala carte menu for something like a wahoo. Um, sharks absolutely love them, they're one of the most popular shore baits, so it's because they have, much like a tuna, they've got a, a very, very high blood content. They've got a lot of ammonia in the blood, and that, that smell gets out very quickly. The blood pumps through, gets out, you see in the fresh body when you cut them, it's that red blood that just oozes out, it's just lovely and delicious. Now, before we get too much off track, you're looking at your your shallower waters and more tropical type styles. They, you're getting them in the Indo-West Pacific, they're quite widespread, you get, you get them in America, you get them in Australia as we mentioned, warm water. Um, here we get them all the way down to Cape St. Francis, that's kind of their lower, lower limit. Um, and then the actual feeding mode, they, they're a kind of a filter feeder in a sense. They, they like swimming mouth open, gills propped up, the gill rakers actually are, can catch food, um, so that's the, the little bones that sit, bones that sit in the, the gills themselves, um, often very sharp spikes you feel if you put your hand into a fish's, fish's gill plate, um, and that they can filter out plankton when they're smaller, and they do also like eating your smaller fish. Now, anchovies high up on their list, they, it's a nice high protein, quick pack, um, so that's going to be the top of their list, but then also your plankton, um, anything that's going to be floating in the water, other than vegeta uh, vegetable matter. So they're really looking at, at protein. Um, there are summer spawners, and they're going to be spawning off KZN, so that's when you're going to get the peak of their abundance here. Um, that's when they're going to congregate more together, so you're going to likely to catch a few. But there are shoaling species, so generally you catch one, you catch a few. In terms of your maximum sizes, you're looking at, they're getting to about 
I think the world angling record is around about 13 kilos, which is a, a very, very big bunny. Here in South Africa, if you get one of say seven, nine kilos, that's that's a that's a beast, absolute beast of bunny. Generally, you catch them from mackerel size all the way up to that nine kilo mark. So the little guys are called jubjubs, it's a colloquial term, and they call jubjubs because everything likes eating a jubjub. Kuta loves a jubjub, Wahoo loves a jubjub. Sharks, unfortunately, do like them. Um, and yeah, obviously shore bait as well, They're very, very deadly. One, another fish that really enjoys it is a kingfish, a giant kingy. They smock eating a little bunny like that. Now, they get to about six years old and around about a meter in length. Now, six years to a meter is a very, very quick growth. So, they are species that can take a lot of uh, angling pressure and that sort of reflects in the, the catch allowment, if you want to call it that where you're allowed to catch 10 per person a day if you're recreational and the commercial guys are actually unlimited so they can catch 20 tons if they really wanted to, if they could. Um, so yeah, here mainly caught by guys fishing for bait or guys throwing spoons from, from the boat or from the shore and uh, elsewhere in the world they're often caught with nets so they'll actually be sane netted off. They'll, they'll close a, they'll find the school and deploy the boats and actually close the school off with a with a net. So that's elsewhere in the world. Here we more don't really target them commercially. It's more of a bait fish to us. So the guys are going to be catching them to to use as bait for other fish or to use as chum, something like that. They you can eat them, but it's quite a the the, the red meat you get along the spine of a tuna. It's very very similar to a bonnie. It's quite a bloody. Not, not a great tasting fish, but if you bleed them straight away, you can bry them, they, they are okay. Rather, rather keep them as bait for, for the summer season. So whether you're using them offshore as a bait fish, whether you're just spinning to catch them for fun from the side, or whether you need a live bait for a wahoo off Aliwal, the bonita really is a species that you need to learn how to catch, you need to practice catching as much as you can, and they really are a lot of fun on light tackle. So yeah, the bonnie. Cheers.